Hello everyone and welcome to the Nations Cup Super Final uh, in a game between Yu Yangi versus Wesley So. Uh, so it's uh, China versus United States uh, and it's uh, probably the best game of the Super Final uh, and uh, of course a very important one as uh, uh, Wei Yi lost his game to Fabiano Corona. Wei Yi went for a Scandinavian, the Queen to D8 Scandinavian at that and uh, Fabi didn't really seem like he had problems winning that game. So uh, uh, it's uh, very important for uh, for Wesley to do well. Uh, so he also scores scores some points for Team USA. Uh, but also, I have no idea why it's called the Super Final. Like, if there was no final, why why call it the Super Final? I don't know if it's just to, to make it appear uh, more important, or is there actually a difference between a final or a Super Final? Uh, but uh, I just thought of that that it was very interesting. Uh, but yeah, uh, getting back to the game, Yuangi with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, uh, we have e6 by Wesley, knight to c3, and the bishop to b4. We go uh, into the Nimzo Indian defense, uh, and knight f3, d5, uh, we transpose into the Ragozin. Uh, defense of the Queen's Gambit declined. We have Queen to b3, attacking the bishop, and now c5, defending the bishop. We have d captures on c5. Now, again, there's the threat of just Queen captures on b4, and Knight to a6. Now, defending and also attacking, you will be able to capture it with, with the bishop. So here, c captures on d5, and now uh, there are known mo no known games where Queen to a5 was played, and also Queen captures on d5 is a known move since uh, the Knight cannot capture, as uh, the, the, the pin exists here. Uh, uh, and uh, Yuan Yi already had this game against Hare Krishna, where Hare, Qu Hare Krishna went for queen to a5. Uh, but here we have a knight captures on d5, and it is already uh, a new move. So uh, already as of move 7, we have a completely new game. And now uh, here, uh, of course, you cannot keep defending the pawn. Uh, so here, uh, Yuan Yi goes for c6. He gives up the pawn to mess up Wesley's pawn structure here. Uh, but Wesley first goes for queen to a5. Uh, and now, you don't have time for this. If you capture, capture, then you just uh, give black too much development and your king is still stuck on e1, so it would be it would be very dangerous to play this. So instead, bishop to d2, uh, just uh, adding another defender to the c3 knight, and only now Wesley captures on c6. Uh, we have g3, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop, and now knight captures on c3. We have b captures, forcing uh, the bishop to move. We have bishop to e7, and now bishop to g2, preparing castles. Uh, we have castles by both sides, uh, and now e5. Uh, just uh, grabbing more, more space in the center. The queen from uh, a5 nicely defends the pawn, and now queen back to c2. Uh, probably with, with ideas of just uh, c5, so maybe if the knight moves, the queen also guards the bishop, uh, and also just clearing the b-file for the rook. So black doesn't like his queen uh, on the same diagonal uh, as the bishop, so queen back to c7, also keeping an eye on the e5 pawn, and now queen to e4, going after the e5 pawn. So f6, now defending it, but on the other hand, you've played f6, and it's, uh, well, it's too early to tell if this is one of those positions where it's actually okay to play f6. So here, queen to c4 with check. Uh, this now opens up this diagonal from the bishop to the rook, or also there might be some pressure uh, on the c6 pawn, uh, and uh, it's uh, just, a, just a useful move. Uh, so king to h8, and now first bishop to e3, controlling the knight on a6. The knight now has no squares. Uh, yes, you can go to b8, uh, and this is exactly what Wesley does. So he has to bring the knight into the game somehow. He, he wants to play bishop to a6 to put pressure on the queen and on the e2 pawn. So rook f to d1. Uh, and now bishop to a6, attacking the queen and the pawn, and there's no way to defend the pawn, but uh, you never uh, intended to defend the pawn. So queen e6, again, he keeps playing against the knight on b8. If the knight cannot develop, uh, the rook uh, also is stuck on a8. So here you're uh, guarding the d7 square, so the knight cannot be developed, but you give up the e2 pawn, which is okay. So bishop captures on e2, rook d2. Uh, you know, the development uh, before material, uh, and the bishop back to a6, and now knight to h4. So already white has a very nice position uh, with control of the d7 square, so black will have uh, troubles developing, knight can come to f5, knight can maybe come to g6 in the future as you've weakened the g6 square by playing f6, maybe some sacrifices will be possible, uh, we'll see. So now Wesley goes back, bishop back to c8, he forces the queen to a less active square, queen back to c4, and now f5. And okay, you grab more space, you are preparing bishop captures on h4, uh, but you still have problems, all of your pieces on the queen side are undeveloped. So knight to f3, 
uh, and now h6 taking away the g5 square from the knight and the bishop uh, and now uh, we have rook a to d1 nicely doubling up on the d file uh, and the king to h7 just uh, improving the safety of the king not allowing any uh, ideas knight jumps in the future maybe so the knight cannot come to g6 uh, and now h4 uh, so just grabbing more space, uh, starting the attack on the king side, we have rook to f6, adding another de defender to the 6th rank, also uh, the, the c6 pawn is now defended, so you might be able to start developing your, your knight and so on. Uh, but here comes knight to g5 with check, and we enter the position from the thumbnail. Uh, where black has to decide whether to capture the knight or not and uh, capturing the knight is in fact the best move there's uh it's not at all clear how the attack should happen uh so here h captures on g5 we have h captures on g5 and now you have to move the rook your rook is under attack uh, and here if rook to e6 then the attack uh, continues and the, the game continues uh, rook to e6 is, is a fine move for black however rook to g6 is not and uh uh, by playing rook to g6, what Wesley did, uh, I'm not going to tell you what he did. I'm, in, I'm instead going to ask you to pause the video and try to win this game for white. Well, I give you a couple of seconds and then we're going to discuss what's the difference between rook g6 and rook e6. So, uh, uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on figuring out that the rook on g6 prevents the king from reaching the g6 square. So, that's a problem. Uh, and also uh, that, uh, well, queen to h4 would be deadly if the king could not go back to g8. So, how do you, how do you solve this puzzle? Uh, you simply prevent the king from going back to g8. And this is exactly what uh, Yuang Yi does. He plays bishop to d5 and takes away the g8 square from the black king. Now, queen to h4 is the deadly threat. Of course, the bishop cannot be captured as the queen on c7 hangs. Uh, and also, uh, if you try something like bishop captures on g5 to take away the h4 square from the queen, then you get bishop g8 check, uh, king to h8, and bishop captures on g5. And after the rook recaptures, now just rook d8, and it's a game over. Uh, there are nasty discoveries incoming, queen to h4 is still a threat, and if you try rook g4 to, to prevent again queen to h4, uh, then comes queen f1, and there's no defense against queen to h3. Really, really uh, wonderful stuff. So after this bishop to d5, Wesley, of course, uh, has to prevent queen to h4 somehow. He plays f4, now again puts pressure on the bishop here, but now comes bishop to e4. And you don't just uh, get to, to trade something because Wes, uh, because Yuan Yi is not in the business of trading. Uh, because after f captures on e3, you have queen to f7, and now it's just game over. There's nothing you can do here, regardless of what black plays. You still cannot move the bishop as the queen hangs on c7. And after you capture something, doesn't really matter what, then you get bishop captures, king goes back, and just uh, a nice checkmate. So after bishop to e4, we have bishop captures on g5. Now, hoping for bishop captures on g6, but uh, like we said, Yu is not in the business of trading. He goes rook to d6, uh, introduces another rook into the attack. Uh, and of course, this rook cannot move, it's pinned. Uh, so, bishop back to f6, now uh, not allowing the rook captures rook. Uh, and now, uh, again, not bishop captures on g6. In chess, the threat is very often stronger than the execution. So, uh, king to g2. Uh, again, introducing another rook into the attack via rook to h1. And here, uh, Wesley finds a way uh, to deal with this. He plays f3 with check. Now, if the bishop moves, the rook is no longer pinned. So, here we have king captures on f3, and now bishop to g4 check, winning the exchange. Uh, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. King to g2. Uh, we have bishop captures on d1, and now we have rook captures on d1, and now it's the same as it was. So the king still has no access to the g8 square. Uh, the rook cannot move, uh, so <laughs> the king cannot go to h6. Black has nothing. Uh, rook to h1 will win the game on the next move, uh, regardless of what uh, what black plays. There's there's no playing this. So yeah, uh, really, really wild game. And with this victory, uh, China uh, scores a victory over the United States. And it is China who wins the Nations Cup, the online Nations Cup by FIDE and Chess.com. Uh, even though the match was a tie, uh, Fabiano Corwana defeated Wei Yi, Nakamura drew against Ding Liren, and uh, Irina Crush drew against Ho Yifan. Uh, so it's 2-2, but uh, because uh, uh, China won, won the previous uh, part of the competition, then they, they have more points and they win, uh, they win the uh, first place in the Online Nations Cup. So yeah, uh, really, really wild stuff and wild games. And uh, do we uh, or do we not award Yuan Yi with a Morphe head? 
it's a uh, it's a good question. Uh, I'm I'm saying we do. There we go. Uh, there's a nice Morphe head for you and Guy. Uh, I wasn't actually thinking about uh, giving it to him or not. I, I just uh, I was just trying to make the the moment more intense. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that as well. And uh, yeah, that's it uh, for, for the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you've enjoyed this short coverage of the Online Nations Cup. Uh, I would like to thank David Kaiser, Robert uh, Sukochov, uh, Mario Raskun, uh, Robert Dittmar and Pierre Yves Bruches for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, we can, uh, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the Morphe saga, we're going to check up on Lila Chess Zero since we, we kind of uh, stopped doing that uh, after the beginning of the Magnus Invitational. Checking up on your wonderful suggestions and, of course, whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.